Hello and welcome to you know, let's play me game move six of Kamina. Before we start, if you're interested in playing this game, you can get it free on itch.io. And if you want to support the people that hopefully will sometime get back to making this game, or and also, you know, other games like Interra, then you can go to their Patreon and give them monies. So, on the last let's play, Nef Nef Neferu? Nefru, uh, was not happy at Brunus, you know, because drugs and combination thereof. And then we went to sleep and had dreams, one of them being about uh, our, the uh, tiger lady. And she doesn't seem particularly happy with the uh, parents. It, like, she seemed... Was it that she wasn't happy with the parents? Well, she's coming to help us in a way, I guess. It's all vague, uh, mystical stuff, you know? And death. See my face? Anyways, I slowly open my eyes, and this time I know I'm truly awake. Despite being slightly groggy, I feel that I am mostly back to normal. I assess everything slowly. Not wanting to take in any sudden movements, in case I'm still under the influence of drugs. But again, it all seems normal. I make my movements to sit up, and that's when someone besides me shifts. I gasp quietly, jerking my head in that direction, only see Nefru there, sitting on the floor, with his back against the bed. I rub my chest reflexively, wondering why I'm so on edge but also remembering that I had some very odd dreams that I can't, can't quite remember. Sorry for sta startling you, and apologies if it seems I'm still teasing you like a child, but unfortunately, after what happened, I needed to be nearby. For my own peace of mind. I shift and turn over so I am facing Nefru more directly, simultaneously pulling back the covers as an invitation for Nefri to sit, which he does. He didn't have to sit on the floor. We've shared the bed before, in both ways. Oh, yes, you seemed upset before you went to sleep, and I feel it's rude to impose without asking in the first place. Well, now you know you're always welcome, unless circumstances really change. You seem to be in good spirits. The way you... S always seemed to be before this mission. You say that as if it has been a long time. We're not to even a day into the mission, Nefru. Nefru is correct, though. For some reason, I'm far more optimistic now, and more confident, more... Suddenly, I have some recollection of as to what I dreamed or didn't dream. It does feel like a very long time, and like it or not, what has happened to you since is very troublesome. Are you alright? Nefru catches me not really paying attention as I revisit this dream, or even vision, of Mera. Sorry, I was just thinking back on what happened. It- Oops, sorry, that's a first shot today. It says, you know, reading. Yes, it was somewhat ridiculous, but I think I have my mindsets in order once again. That's good to hear. However, mental relapse is something you should expect to happen. Not that I want to bring your spirits down, but when it does, please do not hesitate to talk to me. I nod, though my mind is still on the vision. Part of me worries that it might be part of a delusion due to the drugs, and I especially don't trust my interpretation of what's real when I was just hearing voices. However, Mira had said something about the human meeting her, and Nefru knew him as well. Perhaps he knows something about this, or perhaps even Amicus, though I immediately have a strange, but discernible feeling that might not be the best idea. I don't know why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Way well, is kind of later in the day. 
but don't know why, but a hopeful part of me wishes that this might be the guidance of guidance Mirror spoke of. Despite my doubts, however, the potential that somehow an entity that had avoided the amalgamation is trying to help me. Well, it's left me in a good mood. So the amalgamation that kind of everybody joins place in the afterlife in the big beyond or whatever. I don't know. I take advantage of that to try and fully mend my friendship with Nefru, though I feel it's not even necessary, judging by how he's acting. And I'm sorry for pushing you away earlier. I could tell that it was, that it was harmful, hurtful, and I didn't mean for it to be. I simply wanted to appear less weak during a moment of weakness. Ah, uh, you need not apologize. That was my own fault. Oh? How so? In the back of my mind, I remind myself that despite the intimate, close feelings I have with Nefru, this is all still technically a game. I should be calculating the best way to establish a relationship that Nefru cannot do without, even if Kamiya itself is at stake. Vet Viteris told me earlier and this is an especially promising exploit, considering Nefera's relationship with his family. That is my job as a diplomat, but right now, I'm following my emotions wherever they take me. That is not how a diplomat should do their job. Still, this feels like the right path, and I imagine there has to be some level of genuine emotion involved if I am to be most effective. Boy, I should have made myself a cup of tea. Nefro looks at me candidly, letting his setting his lips in a thin line. I don't often like talking about it, but after how he treated you, I owe you. So, so I once knew an Oro fan by the name of Alexios. Oh yeah, that guy. Oh. You knew him personally? Alexios, the pet of Cassius, Amix's brother, and one-time false emperor. Alexios was an agent of Omorurfa, sent to Dastra to sue Chaos in the very fabric, fabric of our society, a mission that was ultimately successful. One can say that he is the main reason for the riots occurring. Well, I knew him, but I doubt anyone knew him personally. Anyway, despite nearly toppling Adastrin's stability, he was never a very good spy. He was simply underestimated. And he struck Cassius as fancy. It's easier to be a spy when you have such a connection to the very heart of power. Did I accidentally skip? I keep a straight face, but I can't help wonder if Nefru is emphasizing this on purpose, because he sees right through me. I see. Hmm. Well, whatever he found him, whenever he found himself cornered, he would often fell into a bit of a particular state of mind. He would dampen his expressions and exhibit the emotional capacity of a rock, a classic diplomatic defensive maneuver he often deployed to get out of situations he did not like. So you're, at first it was like he built up a defense, but it's like, oh, maybe he's meaning that he what did what he did, which is he act shy and sad. He is possibly the most evil, amoral creature I have ever had the displeasure to know. To be clear, I knew he was a spy, just as all governments know that visiting diplomats have ulterior motives. But what I didn't expect was a shriveling coward willing to destroy the foundation of an entire civilization, costing thousands of lives. I nod, not knowing, not having known the cat, I feel a bit detached. Amorra was always loath 
has always loathed the Dastra, as they see us as the biggest threat to stability in the Galaxis. With all due respect to Amicus, I'd always seen the situation to be the fault of the Imperial family for allowing an Omorat Omo Urfan to get so close in the first place. Anyway, when you came out of that laboratory, the look you gave me was a striking strikingly similar, and I simply know that it wasn't you, Skippo. You were a good, honest person, and I know you would never do something for the sake of destruction. And I know that because you were my friend, and despite our differences in culture and language, especially considering the history between our people, I trust you. There is no doubt now that Nefru is expecting me to read between the lines here. And so, based on everything I know about Nefru, I do just that. I know that you're here to gather intelligence to better Adastra's position in the Alliance, and to use me as a tool, just as Alexio used Cassius. I'm lonely, and I need someone that can call a friend, a true friend, and in this relationship, I know that you have nothing to lose, while I could lose everything. But I also know that you are full of compassion, and you would never do what I what he did. And so, while I know you can't be trusted, I trust you. Good way of putting it together. At least, I hope that's what he thinks of me. I look Nefru in the eye. I wonder what I hope is a meaningful what is a meaningful way so that he might know that I understand. And I trust you. I simply want the galaxy to find peace and happiness for all. Then I feel a bit uneasy because I remember those thoughts I had had in my dreams that felt alien, as if they were not my own, but familiar. Like, I simply keep them hidden from myself. Like, removing the strain, stain from the fabric of a Dastrian society. Could I really think such a thing? Thank you, Skip. Truly. I have a feeling that this experience will truly change your life, and your perspective on life itself. A Dastra did that for me, both for bad and for good, so just keep an open mind. And, like I said, I'm always here. There's a soft chime as suddenly Ahem comes over the public speakers. Exiting stretch drive in ten minutes, prepare for security check and royal escort. I guess I slept longer than I thought. N not for... A surprise, not a surprise, considering the sedation, but I'm fully awake. Now I'm fully awake. I see a vast moon below me. Are all these guys living on moons? Planet, I mean. Okay, fair enough. Kamiya is a planet, after all, several times larger than Adastra. At one point, most of the land was in hospitable desert, but through years of in Vesting and building high-tech infrastructure, along with slightly altering the environment of their own planet, something no sibling would risk even trying. Most of it is now populated. I stare down at, at the place that I have been so fascinated with since I was young and found those picture books in the library of, of that school for the gifted. From a distance, it is a bit strange to see such an unexciting looking planet. No one would ever guess that the most advanced civilization in the galaxy exists on the surface. At least, if they somehow were able to avoid seeing the vast number of space faring ships flying back and forth. A few ships that that have they have to be several kilometers away still look impressively large, which mean they're gigantic. 
At the moment, I realize that I'm seeing something that I've actually studied. The space cruise resorts, each the size of small cities, taking comedians and many other children and siblings on affordable high-tech vacations. My feelings of wonder only simply only multiply as I remember that the early, earliest Kameen history is rather bleak. Despite having civilizations before even being uplifted, there was constant war between what were known as water kingdoms. The planet was always at such high risk of drought that the security of water always determined influence, power, and future stability. But, as they always would, Kameans overcame it. That's a nice little picture here. Too bad I can't hide this thing down here. You know the words. But maybe I could somehow. Wait, do you guys only have four fingers? Those are heckin' big beans, though. Meanwhile, I stand with my face pressed against the glass, gazing out at all the amazing things I can see, all the things I studied for so long. Despite the many rough patches I had, haven't counted over the course of my journey, the sea suddenly makes me realize something. I've made it. After years of hard work and intense competition, I finally made it to my destination. A mission is far from over, of course, but now I can actually see it. My goal is right there, below me. Not only that, but I might be the first wolf in decades to have this view. For a moment, reality seems fragile again, but in a way that's euphoric. I very much hope that I'm not dreaming. You like staring at boring things, kid? You like staring at boring things, kid? Everyone's jealous of Kamiya, but damn, it's ugly to look at from afar. I twitch my ears, an acknowledgement of Brutus teasing, but I continue staring, wanting to imprint the view into my long-term memory. It's a sight I'll likely never have again, especially if our departure has us facing the opposite direction. Kamiya is the subject of a study, Brutus, and the first time and the first time he is seeing it in person. I know, I know, but I still, but I still just, um, it's still just a ball of sand though. At, at least a dasher looks pretty from above. I do somewhat agree, there isn't all that much to look at. Meanwhile, Dastra has plentiful diversity and seasons to take advantage of. So uh, like, how's the gravity thing work between planets anyways? Because the Daster is a moon. And this is a planet. By all measure, Kamiya would have been behind the rest. Should have been behind the rest with terrible start they were given. But once the parents established contact, the jackals uplifted faster than any other sibling, fully committing themselves to the parents' vision. This led to Kamiya having an edge over all siblings ever since. And all of this legendary history took place right here, on this planet. I smile. With a univer when a university student chooses Kamean culture as their discipline, they must have at least one course on Dastran culture that emphasizes the best of a Dastra. Mm hmm And despite knowing it's to all be blatant propaganda, that was so clumsily, so clumsy, it usually just left me feeling embarrassed rather than proud. There's a value that they managed to instill in me. One should always be wary of complete submission to a higher power. This doesn't include the Emperor, of course, but rather it was targeted at the parents. There's a certain amount of pride that comes with being the most rebellious sibling race. One the Oro fans might hold the title now. But in the end, you've paid dearly for it. And despite the propaganda instilled pride, 
I could only stand in awe, while staring down at the home of the jackals, the siblings that are one step away from parenthood. Despite not having set foot on the planet yet, I'm already extremely envious of those beautiful ships, and I only wonder where Dastra would be if we cooperated better. Nefru uh, and Brunus talk amongst themselves, have, leaving me to absorb the moment. I'm only snapped out of it when I hear Vetrius and with his reedy, rapid-fire voice near the spot that Nefru and I stand. Meanwhile, Amicus's deeper, calmer tones give one-sided answers. I finally pull away from the window in time to see the two of them come around the bend in the corner, Amicus looking annoyed, while Vetrius looks a bit excited and ag agitated. Massive, massive. Jekyll's spread all over the land, and all sustained with renewable energy and recycled water. Indeed. Then Amicus spots me and perks up. They've bested their own planet. Yes, um, Scipio, I wanted to... They've harnessed the power of their entire star with structures a hundred times larger than our planet, than our hundred times larger than our largest construction projects. Or uh, I was thinking a Tyson sphere, but they probably he's probably mean like solar panels. Vetrius, please. Imagine if we could even achieve a fraction. Vetrius, stop for a moment, please. Of course, Amicus. Hello, Scipio. I Scipio. I've had just come to learn that we'll be meeting the Pharaoh upon our landing. It would be best to go over our objectives one final time before starting our assignment. To be continued. <gasps> Damn. Well, and yeah, yeah, I guess as far as I know, that was the end of that. Ooh, but let me just look at stuff. Uh, hmm. No, that wouldn't be it. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, because I I did remember. I think the per how do you the perp having uh, something of this, you know, where he was a uh, or what's his name was um. Yeah, chatting with Amicus. What's going on here? Sorry, I was just looking at a picture. We're trying to look at a picture. Oop. I don't think I've seen all these things. I should. There's a lot of big, muscular dudes. Who's that? Anyways. Uh, yeah, I know you guys aren't seeing it. Um, where... I thought there was one where it was the end right here, but I don't know. Never mind. So, yeah. I guess now would be me to go do in Terra. Now, let me just quickly look up. What am I looking for? Echo. O project. H.I.O. Wait, they have a new... Another one called Glory Hounds? That thing looks weird. Very colorful. Oh, 
Mass Vigilante. Huh. Uh, Melitzi and Terra. So where's the information, anyways? Update schedule. I guess we'll just... Just trying to look up, uh, stuff. Okay, so yeah. Terra will be released very soon. Reaction. I've been writing sections over the plot, so that's causing some delays. If I'm being honest, I think some lingering feelings of doubt that I had while writing Kamiya, especially concerning the direction of the story. I didn't think this would be an issue as in Terra, which has a much easier story to tell. But it's become more complex as I've sat down to write it. And there. Yep. Just want to get more info if I can. Oh, that's a cute little thing. Okay, too long didn't read. Chameans temporary on hold, new visual novel, uh, Dastra Cities? Yeah, uh, working title. I guess they call it, turn it into here. Okay, that was a uh, February of like last year, 2021, and said, I will be no longer than summer. Mm. Eh, stuff happens. Oh well. But yeah, that's going to be the end of this Let's Play and series, unless they continue this. I guess next one on list is in Terra. The uh, one that's. Let's see, what is Intera? I think it's like it's supposed to go alongside Adastra. Quite a few CGs right here. Hmm, doesn't exactly say the information. But I think it's like it's supposed to go alongside uh, Adastra, though there is pictures of Amicus with the Emperor crown. Maybe I was wrong. Oh well, we'll both find out next week, I guess. Oh, whenever I continue in Terra. So anyways, end of this. Please have a comment, guess, a like, comment, if you like, dislike. You don't really have to do tips or tricks because, you know, we haven't actually picked anything. Though it doesn't seem like me, uh, like these games are particularly choice heavy or choice. Um, if you like my YouTube and would like to see grow, then please like, subscribe, and check out the videos that help it grow. And please remember to spay near your animals to help control the pit population. And until next time, say me, Animal Six of another game by these people about big wolf guys and jackal guys. So thanks and see you.